السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة All praise is due to Allah, we praise him, we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our own actions Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray 
and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife and from them both he created many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kin. Surely Allah is ever an all watcher over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah, fear him and speak the truth. He will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement. The best words are those of Allah. And the best guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters. For all the newly invented matters in religion are innovation, and every innovation is bid'ah and is misguidance and it leads to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yadlimu mithqala dharra. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do injustice even by the weight of an atom. And in the divine hadith, hadith al-Qudusi, yaqulu Allah azza wa jal, يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in this divine hadith, O my servants, I have made injustice, oppression, transgression. I made it haram for myself. I made it forbidden for myself. And thus, I command you not to fall into this. Not to fall into injustice. Do not commit injustice towards one another or oppression or transgression towards one another. When we think about oppression and injustice, we usually think about judging between two people or treating two or more, more people justly. But there is a thin thread of justice that follows from the mizan, the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down with the Qur'an. And that is connected to the fitrah. And that is connected to the truth, the ultimate truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, that he sent down with all his prophets and messengers. And he sent it in all of his revelations. And this fine thread of justice is ubiquitous. It's common. It's everywhere. It has to do with every aspect of your life. So there is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is easy to fall into injustice and oppression towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although, whatever we do, we will never be able to harm Allah. Humanity, all of the creation, no matter how wicked they could ever be, they could never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we could do injustice towards our creator. We could do injustice towards one single person, another human being. So it doesn't necessarily have to do with two or more people. We could also do injustice to oneself. You could do injustice towards your spouse. You could do injustice towards your children. You could do injustice towards your parents. You could do injustice towards ultimately anything that exists in this life. So what is this thin thread of, of justice that humans usually violate on a daily basis? And that's to give everything its due right. And that is to live life in a state of balance. Previously and a couple of times we quoted the famous story that happened between two of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was a daily occurrence. It was a normal incident. But their daily life was full of wisdom and learning and lessons because their hearts were open to learn. 
They had no sense of pride against learning and educating themselves. They didn't have this, this ego issue where people are so adamant to be right and they want to prove they're right at any cost. So it was Suhaib al-Rumi and Abu Darda. So Suhaib al-Rumi sees the wife of Abu Darda. She's not in a good shape. And he asks her, what's going on? Why didn't you take care of yourself? She says, your friend has no need in this life, has no interest in this life. So obviously he has neglected her as his, as his spouse. Suhaib al-Rumi is a person of knowledge, one of the knowledgeable companions. So he realizes, I need to give advice. I need to do justice to my friend and my brother in Islam. And he was the guest of Abu Darda. So Abu Darda prepared some food for Sahib al-Rumi and offered, offered, offered it to him. Sahib al-Rumi refused to eat until Abu Darda ate with him, although he was fasting. Abu Darda was fasting. He excused himself and Suhaib al-Rumi insisted that you eat with me as your guest. And he agreed and he ate with him. When it was the night time after Isha, Abu Darda stood up. He wanted to start praying all the night because he was trying to fast all days and pray all nights. He thought he was doing justice to Allah and justice to himself by exerting himself in worship. The intention is good. And it's a great thing to do more acts of worship and grow in worship and in increase yourself in worship and offer more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the premise is perfect and sound. But Suhaib al-Rumi tells him, go to sleep. Go to sleep. And he takes the advice, he goes to sleep. When it was the last third of the night, Suhaib al-Rumi wakes up and he wakes Abu Darda up and he says, now let's pray. Now you can wake up and pray. Pray. And then he gave him an advice after they prayed. He didn't approach him straight forward as, as, as soon as he saw his wife in that shape. He didn't reprimand him, put him down. He didn't speak harshly towards him. He realized I have to do justice to my brother. Justice is to give him advice, but also justice in the way I give advice. I can't take away his dignity from him. I can't violate his rights as a human being. I cannot just speak to him in any which way, just as I wish. And I have to advise him in a way that is most likely to be accepted. So he thought he was thoughtful about that. So after they prayed and they had this beautiful experience connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he sits with him and he says, He says, Inna li ahlika alayka haqqan, wa inna li rabbika alayka haqqan, wa inna li badanika alayka haqqan, fa'ati kulla di haqqan haqqa. He says, Your Lord has rights upon you. Your spouse has rights upon you. Your wife has rights upon you. Your body has rights upon you. Give everyone their rights. Give everyone their right. That's the fine thread of justice in everything we do. So you need to give everyone their right. If you violate someone's right, that's injustice. That's vulm. That's oppression and transgression. Even though we don't like to define it that way. So, in a sense, when it comes to people's rights in this world, we're sort of walking on a rope. We have to be careful. We have to be precise. It's easy to violate people's rights, especially when we listen to the voice of our ego and our pride. And we're so consumed with our own greatness and aggrandizement. So we could also do injustice towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We could easily do injustice. How? By not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights, what he deserves. So you could be an oppressor against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is this when you don't observe the salah? The prayer on its time. You have become a valim, an oppressor. You oppress, you transgress against Allah. You're committing a vulm and injustice towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't think of it that way. We don't think of it that way. But we are on the wrong side when we don't offer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights. When we are not truthful to Allah, any time you violate any of the limits of Allah, and that is what is, hala what is halal and what is haram, what is obligatory that you do it, and 
and what is haram that you refrain and stay away from it. If you violate any of these, you have become a zalim. You have oppressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's not the full story. You have transgressed against your own self. So what is the right of Allah upon you? So that you can follow that thread and observe that thread of justice. You have to learn the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. First and foremost, knowing who Allah is. Knowing who Allah is when people deny the existence of a creator. Although they themselves are the biggest sign and the clearest sign that he is there. When a piece of flesh turns, turns around to have life in it, to have emotions, to have thoughts, to have breath in it, where does this come from? Where does this come from? And then people walk around arrogantly. If there is a creator, show him to me. That is a big, huge ego that's going to burn these people and kill them. They're shrouded in arrogance. So the first, thing, the first right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know him, we recognize him. We know him for who he is. The most merciful, the most omnipotent and almighty and all powerful. He's the one who has given us everything. He's the all knowing. He's the all hearer. He's the all seer. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you go, wherever you may be. He sees you, he watches you, he hears you, he knows what's in your heart, he knows what's in your mind, he knows your intentions, he knows your subtle motivations, he knows your ultimate end, he knows everything about you, he knows you inside out, more than you know yourself. You have to be aware of this, that's his right. And then that you worship him based on that, you treat him based on that, that's what worship means, how you treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Offer him his rights. Don't deny him his rights. And don't violate his limits. Who can you do injustice to? Yourself. And that's the most common type of injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about people, From among those humans, there are those who are oppressors against themselves. They oppress themselves. They commit injustice and zulm towards themselves. And it doesn't even occur to us. The moment you deny yourself the right to enter paradise, you have done injustice to yourself. You are entitled. You are entitled. You have the inherent right, the innate right to enter paradise. You have that right given to you by Allah. And you're given this life as an opportunity to make your way there. And you've been given the instructions. You've been given everything you need to make your way back there. And it's yourself's right to make it there to paradise. But most people deny themselves that right. And thus, they take away that right from themselves. And they commit injustice. And they oppress themselves. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this term, ظالمٌ لنفسه. An oppressor against himself. And it doesn't occur to us. We think oppression or injustice is about judging between two or more people. But justice runs through everything in life. If you don't do the right thing in any situation or any context, you're doing injustice. So when you don't pray, we don't, when you don't observe the prayer, you have denied yourself its right. You have taken away its opportunity and its right to make it to paradise. When you do not enjoy the Quran and read it and learn it, you deny your brain and your mind and your heart and your soul the beauty of the Quran, the light of the Quran, the life of the Quran, the guidance of the Quran and the knowledge of the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're doing injustice. You're doing injustice. And who else do we commit injustice towards? Other people. Other people, individually. Individually. When you don't give someone their rights, their inherent rights, you're doing injustice to them. And how often we fall in that. A simple right of a Muslim, you pass by a Muslim, it's his right upon you to give him salam. 
if you pass by a Muslim and you don't give them salam, you have done injustice towards them. As simple as that. As simple as that. Any human being on earth, their inherent right is the basic dignity of a human being, respect. You violate that with sarcasm, with ignoring that person, giving that person a dirty look, looking down upon this person, showing contempt, showing disgust with a facial feature or expression. You have done injustice. You've become a valim. You've become a valim. Look at how the Prophet ﷺ shows us how we can actually practice this kind of justice in every aspect. If you look at the Sharia, if you look at the Book of Allah and the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, you'll find that everywhere. But it's not necessarily offered as justice as in, uh, or injustice. It's offered as instructions from the Prophet ﷺ. Look at this beautiful example from the Prophet ﷺ, how he instructs a husband to treat his wife. The Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith, لا يفرك مؤمن مؤمنة إن كريها منها خلقا رضي منها آخر Let not a, believer, a believing man hate his wife or develop contempt and detest, det detestation towards his wife. Because if he hates some of her conduct or some of her traits, he would definitely be pleased with other aspects of her personality. Look at the injustice. Look at the justice. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, when your vision and your focus is weighted as you treat your wife, or any person for that matter, you focus on their weaknesses, you focus on their mistakes and their shortcomings, or their faults, or their mistakes, you're doing injustice. You are doing injustice. The Prophet ﷺ is guiding that husband that if you find that you're having some kind of aversion to, towards your wife, some hatred, you feel you want to turn away from her. You're losing that love for her, that affection for her. That's because you're so much focused on her negative traits or the things you don't like about her. So he says, you should not hate your wife. If there are things you dislike about her, there are things you like. There are things you like. That's justice. That's justice. So justice is a beautiful prescription for a balanced and happy life. For healthy relationships. Healthy relationships. How often we approach people, we condemn people, we criticize them, we put them down, we point out their mistakes, right? And we think I'm being truthful. I'm giving advice, I'm giving nasiha. But we only focus on people's mistakes. But we don't do the same when it comes to the good things about them. We see something good about a brother or a sister or about any human being. We don't approach them and say, you know, what you did was just, what you just did was so beautiful. It was amazing. Thank you so much. We don't do that. We only talk about being honest and being truthful and giving advice when it comes to picking on people's mistakes and putting them down. Isn't that a bias? And what is bias? Injustice. Injustice. It's easy for us to say that so and so, he has this mistake. He said that. He said this. Look at what he's wearing. Look at his pants. Look at his shirt. Look at his hair. Look at his beard. Look at his eyes and his nose. Look at his family. Look at his children. Look at what he did. Look at his car and so on and so forth. See, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making stuff up. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just talking about what's there, right? But there is so much you haven't talked about. So many good things you haven't talked about. Why? When children talk about their parents, they complain about their parents. They say, oh, my dad told me off the other day. He won't let me stay till late outside of the house. He wants me to do this. He pushes me to do my homework. He prevents me from going with this or that trip and so on and so forth, right? But you forgot, you forgot how, how hard your dad worked to bring food on the table, to send you to the best schools, to make you wear the best clothes. 
to look after you. How many sleepless nights your parents had, your father and mother had, for you to be healthy. You had a fever, they couldn't even sleep. You were struggling, they were crying their eyes out for your pain. But that doesn't count now. That doesn't count. And it happens the opposite way as well. Sometimes parents out of good intention, they want the best for their kids. So what do they do? They push them beyond their limits, beyond the edge. And what happens? They pick on their mistakes. They're on the lookout for mistakes. They're happy when they catch the kids making mistakes. They want to put them down and point out the mistakes, thinking that's how you develop your child. If you don't have a balance, you can't develop the child. Why don't you, you know, point out the good things they do? Don't offer, offer them cheap praise. Offer them genuine praise. Praise what they do if it's good. You were so kind to your sister. That was really beautiful. That was a beautiful thing to do. Jazakallah khair. Keep it up. As we point out their mistakes, why don't we point out the good things about them? Same thing. We do the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at life, we are shrouded. We are, you know, we enjoy so much of the, of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we own our attention only goes to what's missing, what's going wrong. So we're doing injustice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look around, Allah has given you so much. Allah has helped you so much. Allah has saved you from so much pain and so much calamity. He offered you so much beyond your imagination, beyond your ability to count and enumerate. And yet, when two, three, ten things go wrong, seemingly go wrong, you start complaining that you live in misery, nothing works out in your life, you're miserable, other people are more entitled, other people are more favored by Allah, you, they get it all, but you don't have nothing. Isn't that injustice? Isn't that injustice? When Allah has given us everything, Allah points out in a very simple verse that He repeats twice in the Quran consecutively that most of us are focused on the hardship and we forget the ease. This is why Allah says, Indeed, with every hardship there is ease, but our focus is on the hardship. We miss out on the ease. There's no situation that is, doesn't have ease. No situation that doesn't have ease, but we consumed with the hardship. So we miss out on the ease. That's the thin thread of justice in everything. In everything. Justice even to your body. Give your body the food that it requires. Healthy food. Healthy food. Give it the rest that it needs. Nurture your body. Look after it. Don't exhaust it. Don't abuse it. That's part of justice. It's part of justice. When you do worship, do it in moderation and in a balance. When you do criticism and advice, do it in balance. When you look at your life conditions, do that in balance. Don't be biased. Don't be unjust towards your creator, towards yourself, towards people, towards humanity, sometimes towards, it, sometimes towards the weather. Oftentimes we complain about the weather. Nasty weather, we call it, when it's a gift from Allah. There, there are so many countries in the world that live in drought. And then we complain about how much rain and snow we have. And we call it nasty, disgusting, when it's a blessing from Allah. And we forget how many beautiful days we get in spring and summer and in fall. We forget about all of this, right? That's injustice. It's just injustice. It's injustice when you ignore the Quran and you leave it on the shelf for months and years. That's injustice. You oppress the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So justice runs through everything in our lives. Just pay attention. It might be a fine thread, but we should pay attention. And it will bring about, it will fix so many of our affairs. So try to observe this fine thread of injustice in everything and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you be just to everyone and everything that will bring about so much ease in your life. So I'll conclude this khutbah with a reminder just on the announcement the brother did at the beginning. And that's about supporting the Muslim schools. So 
Muslim schools still in the early stages and we are in dire need to help them out. So do your best to help them. Our children need good environments, positive environments where they can grow and thrive and learn. And we need to equip them to be able to deal with this life and face it, yet maintain their identity and their religion and their faith and their uniqueness. And the Muslim schools are probably among the, the mediums that have potential, but we need to put more support in them. So whatever you can do to help out, inshallah, with the Abu Huraira school, it's in its early stages and it needs a lot of support. Inshallah, a lot of this reward will be multiplied as it's a good investment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma akhtar al mu'minina wal mu'minat. المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر الرشد عز فيه أهل طاعتك ويذل فيه أهل معصيتك ويعمل فيه بكتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم كن للمصدعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم حق دماءهم وصن أعراضهم واحفظ عليهم دينهم وإيمانهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين